All right, rocking the autopilot today. Uh, fishing's been kind of weird. It's like that early spring stuff. I'm still catching a few fish, but so we've had an unusually, you know, fast warm up, and it seems like the water's a lot warmer already, and there's been that transition of fish moving from deep to shallow. This, that's hard for me, man. I'm not a good shallow water fisherman. Last night we had some rain. Uh, we had a little co couple colder days. Temps are fluttering at 60. Today's gonna be like 64, 65. So 60 is gonna be the new norm. So I have to adjust to this no matter what. Um, so I might struggle on this for a little while until we really get going. That seems to be the pattern this time of year. You, the consistency is not there. So whatever you find today, just don't rely on it. Tomorrow is definitely a, a good way. Um, when the fish are kind of deeper, yeah, you can kind of rely on their where they're gonna be. But uh, as they pull out of the deeper stuff and start hunting shallow, it's gonna be tough. So let's see what we can find today. Uh, I'm prepared to fish shallow today mostly, uh, but I do still have some deep stuff. So we'll see as the tides move around. Today we're fishing a tidal area that has both freshwater and saltwater fish. It's been a very fast warm up, so I don't know where these fish are today. I think they'd be cruising and hunting, so this is gonna be tricky. Uh, structure is always worth a look. All right, let's see if there's anything here. Maybe. Current's whipping pretty hard, but never know. I see some life on the bank. Got him. It's the fish. 15 feet. Piper. Okay. Okay. Well, at least we got a couple bites here then. Okay. Nothing spectacular there, but. All right, at least it tells me I got life kind of deep. See it, pal. Inhaled the j that barefoot jig. Let's do that drift again then. Gonna work through this 15 foot zone then. Threw some corks and some stuff shallow early, but nothing doing. Yeah, I'm marking fish here actually. Striper on the pink whip tail. Nothing to, nothing to write home about, but we're catching a few. Okay, I guess my theory of going shallow might not work out. Threw the cork for a while. I spent most of my time fishing shallow so far this morning, but it seems like uh, what I like to do best might be the way for me. This is a, a barefoot jig. Buddy Tim makes these. They really are awesome for jerk baits, split tail shads. They just give so much action to these sorts of lures. Unbelievable.
Nice fish. Ooh. Not bad. Striped bass. Oh, we lost him. That's okay. Can't keep him anyway, so that's just fine if we lose him. doing this right. I've never fished this before, so well, I guess I did it right. Spot lock. <laughs> I hope I'm doing this right. Striper. Alright, nothing, nothing impressive yet, I know. All cookie cutters. Little schooly bass. I'm learning all here. Okay. Fish was a little deeper. This lure is a four and a half inch Elias shad. Um, that's a half ounce jig head. These are my new ones. Uh, they've got double wire bait keepers on them. These striped bass, for the most part, are stocked fish. I mean, there's a handful of wild ones, but um, they get stocked in an attempt to restore the po spawning population here. And they'll hang out with the red drum and the speckled trout. Um, you never know, you could always find a, a pretty decent size one, you know, 32, 33 inch or most of them are going to be 20 to 22 inches. No reds in the mix. Funny, I came out here, I don't know, two weeks ago, it was straight red drum bite. Oh, it's schooly stripers. Might be a better one. Don't, don't fish this parts that often to really be super dialed in on all any of this. A couple of a little bit better fish. Most of these do seem to be 20, 21 inch. Could be kind of nice to see a 30 incher here. Most of them do seem to be this size though. It seems like there is a lot of them though. All right. Lost one jig. That was on white and pink. Let's try the purple chartreuse color. See how that does. If we improve size, anything. Okay. These fish should be pretty aggressive on structure like this for the most part, though. Oh my gosh, I didn't even hit the bottom. Guess there's a few fish here by the danger sign. Guess they like purple. Easy there, pal.
Okay, it's the first one on the purple. Cool. All right, found a lot of smaller stripers. Let's try to look around. Maybe we can find some bigger ones or we can find some reds. Just something that pulls a little harder than the, those 20, 22 inch stripers. But you had a ton of them. Maybe I hit bottom in 15 feet. It was like boop, boop, boop. I'm trolling now, kind of on the, the ledges, so we'll see if we find anything doing that. Might have marked a couple of fish here. I think I am marking some. Yeah, I'm definitely marking fish, guys. Let's stop on this. Oh, I don't really want to troll them up, honestly. That's not quite how I want to do this. Right on the edge of the current, so I don't know. It could be gar. A lot of these spots do have quite a few gar in them. Guess not gar. Stripers. Oh my gosh, there's a bunch of stripers under me here. I don't know what they're all doing here. Not really much current, kind of a weird spot to see him, but yeah, you see that? I'm sure you can. Bunch of them. I don't like trying to get them to bite without current though, it can be really hard. Ooh, nice big rise here. Let me try jigging this. This looked pretty good actually. Didn't mark much, but I did like how that looked. I might have marked a couple fish down there as I came around that corner. It's hard to tell. It's definitely a big rise and a nice mud flat. Came out for a second here. Okay. Gotta be careful though. We're gonna hang up if we screw this approach up here. Broke him off. Like a kook. All right, found some fish on the outgoing. Incoming is being pretty difficult so far, honestly. Um, I don't know if these fish move. That's quite possible. I've been trolling just to see. Not much love on the troll either, so. I feel like I'm missing a bunch of them. I'm finding a lot of uh, small striped bass. Um, I know it's kind of repetitive, so I'm gonna try to find some drum or something else. Zach's fishing live bait. He hasn't gotten like a catfish or any of that, you know, those sorts of fish. I try to find some drum or striped bass in a different area here, because these all seem to be the same size. So I'll check out a couple creeks then, see what's in the creeks. Plenty of stripers here, but like I said, they seem to all be kind of that smaller size, so. No bites on the troll. It's a good idea here is to throw the shrimp on the grass, honestly. It's one thing. Rig this up kind of like a, like a, like a worm weight, so it gets down a little bit easier here. So we got a lot of fish that are kind of that five to eight foot zone, but I want to get down a little bit easier. Oh, oh yeah, on the shrimp, baby. Not big. But on this little light rod, it feels great. Oh, it is a red drum. Not a big one. Oh yeah, that's the way to do it. I think I'll put my sweater back on. 
Jump the gun. Ooh. Striper. Or is that a uh, slot? Smaller red again. There's a lot of smaller reds. Okay. Let's fish that could pull. A little bit harder. Sorry guys. Ooh, that's a nicer one. Oh man. That barefoot jig is the is where it's at, man. That makes these plastics next level, man. Real nice net I got there. Yeah, man. These jigs. I don't want to, you know, talk up products like uh, like I can't put my money where my mouth is. But if you like fishing straight tail plastics like this, these are mine, right? These are Elias be fishing ones or Zoom flukes. Any of those sorts of baits, man. These jig heads are a must. I really firmly believe that with that flat flared head makes these fish go crazy for these profiles. What a great red drum. Alright so there's a huge amount of frustration this time of year because the fish are really moving a lot. So I, I, I've tried a lot of these spots a couple times this past week and a half. It's like it's been me so mediocre. Today seems to be a little bit like, I feel like I learned from a lot of my failures in the last few trips. And I'm doing a little bit better today because I'm being very flexible. I'm like not committing to a single spot and covering a lot of ground. And I seem to be doing a little bit better in that regard. All right, so let's just dip our, dip our dipstick there. <laughs> It's not really the word I wanted to use, but... Ooh, there's a fish. I haven't been finding too many fish in here. Fish are really scattered about, probably hunting. It's a nice one right there. Golden. Yeah, I know. We gotta retire this net once and for all here. I know. I know. Really scattered bite for the most part. The stripers seem to have been in a little bit bigger schools, but the reds are, I guess they're starting to hunt. These schools of fish seem to be two or three right now. The part you're not seeing is the two trips I had that I try to follow a winter pattern. And, you know, I might have caught one fish and then I stayed way too long in the area because I was, you know, kind of thinking or maybe overconfident there should be more fish in the zone typically when you find fish in winter you're going to find big schools of fish right or usually a decent amount um, because there's just a lot more dead water today even though i'm kind of still fishing winter zones i found life almost everywhere right anywhere that i you know had a little corner or anything to stop on pretty much got a bite on so that was the biggest mistake. And then uh, I, I went to a fish shallow the other day 
thinking I was going to find a lot of life shallows. Yeah, I didn't do so hot in the shallows, honestly. But it's also, that could be user error. I'm not a good shallow water fisherman. I picked one red in like four or five feet of water on the Savage Gear Shrimp. Um, those two bigger, nicer reds came vertical jigging. The setup I'm jigging with today for some of this lighter stuff, that's a Pen Clash 2000. There's 15 pound braided line on there and a Pen Battalion 2. Uh, I like an extra fast action rod when it comes to the jerk baits. Me personally, um, just get a little more action out of them. With the uh, paddle tails, the heavier paddle tails, the medium heavy is usually pretty much what I'm what I'm going for. And I did a little jigging with paddle tails today too. Um, that's a Pen Slammer 2500. That's a good jigging reel. It's one of the better Pen jigging reels in my opinion. Kind of like it better than the, you know. I put it around the Clash. Just the line lay on the pen's kind of ugly, you know. Uh, Clash does have a little bit of a nicer line lay. Uh, and that's a half ounce jig head on the swim bait right there. So that's kind of what we use. Those Fenwick HMGs are good um, bite tackle jigging rods too. It got a lot of action to them. So let's see if Zach picked up one on live shrimp. So Zach brought live shrimp. Uh, the stripers were not interested in live shrimp. I think he tried jigging for a while. And let's see if he got a red drum with live shrimp. I'm guessing he should get the red drum should be eating the live shrimp. All right, headed in now. Fun little day. I think I got it in my brain now. It's basically springtime. Maybe I'll stick around some of these winter areas for another, you know, week or two for tops. And hopefully back in the ocean, dropping mud crabs and uh, all that stuff. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll catch up with you in the next video.